And welcome back to Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel here. Stu Jones in the studio with producer Ryan McCoy. And I know that we have been missing you guys, and you guys I know have been missing us too. But here we are back again for this really fun reunion as we head back to the Bahamas. And it's a big celebration, the 30th annual Bahamas Poker Run. And uh, that officially makes it the longest-running Florida Powerboat Club event in the history of our organization. It all began in May of 1992. We have an exciting episode ahead, so before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Florida Powerboat Club's 2021 series sponsors include Blackwater Boats and their sister company, Deep Impact Boats, along with their exclusive worldwide dealer, Plantation Boat Mart, Midnight Express Power Boats, Mercury Racing Wide Open, Mystic Power Boats, Myco Custom Trailers, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, and our official prize sponsor, Superior Communications, providing us with Garmin and Icon products as prizes for our Poker Run events. And as always, getting things kicked off right here at Hullover Marine Center. And uh, there's a newcomer to the boat ramp uh, with his brand new Axopar, and that is Rob Rill from Puerto Rico. Very excited to be launching his boat. Over 20 teams all together from around the globe. And when I say the globe, I truly mean it because we have teams here from the United States, from Canada, and as far away as Europe joining us for this festive event. And as we are all about to find out, uh, this Bahamas Poker Run is one of the events on our roster that truly lives up to the concept of power boating in paradise. And I think that's where I got the term from 30 years ago when we started using that for all of our advertising. And you know, it's one of those things that just stuck with us and has then become the name of our TV show. And of course, the name of the club's lifestyle power boating magazine and it looks like we went uh, from Hallover Marine Center back up here to Pompano Beach at the airport which is known as the Pompano Air Park it's early in the morning and this is where it all begins so while the FPC photo and video crew which would be uh, Jerry shooting stills and Joe shooting video uh, getting ready to board this R-44 helicopter, which will have some flying tolerances today because we have to uh, go out over the ocean and they're going to be kept from going, you know, more than about seven or eight miles offshore uh, based on these uh, FAA requirements for these helicopters. But that's uh, something that we're going to work around uh, with our course today as we head out through Hallover Inlet. Looks like the weather is holding out nicely. Remember, it's early in the morning. The winds are still relatively light. Our plan for these crossings over the Gulf Stream is to start as early as possible so we can avoid the winds and the seas and have a comfortable ride over to Bimini. That's going to be our destination today, but of course the event is going to continue with an extended version. We're going to head to Bimini for two days and stay through Sunday. At that time, some of the teams will return to the mainland, while the rest of us are going to continue eastbound. We're going to cross the Bahama Bank to Chub Key. We'll spend a little bit of time there for a refuel and a nice lunch stopover. And then we will continue our trip southbound, not too far, just about another 30 miles to cross over to Nassau, where we're going to stay for the following two days. And it is going to be uh, quite the adventure for all of us. And whether you've done this trip many times before or whether it's your very first time, it's always an adventure crossing the Gulf Stream over to the islands of the Bahamas. And it just never gets old. And we've got some uh, funky special effects here. And those of you who watch our show know exactly what that is. And what is it, guys? Wait for it. That's right. It's a GoPro 360 Max. It is mounted to the tail section or the stinger of our R44 helicopter. It is going to give us some really cool creative angles that our producer, Ryan McCoy, loves to explore. And uh, no, guys, if you're feeling dizzy watching those cool GoPro shots, it's because it makes you feel dizzy. We promise that uh, nobody has spiked your drink. So closing in here on Hallover Marine Center, once again, thank you to them for their hospitality at all times. Remember, guys are coming in here, many of them for their first time, going to be staging and launching here, parking their trucks and trailers here at the marina. And the staff has always made everyone feel very welcome. And I get a lot of compliments back from our attendees and also from the staff here at Hallover Marine Center about how great everybody gets along and I think we got the program down guys and whether it's one of our smaller events like this uh, 20 boat roster going to the Bahamas or one of our bigger events like the Key West Poker Run with probably 150 or more boats going through this facility they always make it look easy. And we have got the Project 1080 fired up, a family trip and that was uh, Anthony Bertozzi and his uh, similar 38 foot cigarette Top Gun 
quite a variety of boats, as you can see. Uh, there's a good look there at it. That's a Mystic 44 Cat, Rob Lockyer, and alongside him, a 42 Scout center console. So you really have quite a mixture of boats here attending this event. And hey, welcome to the Florida Power Boat Club. That's the way it is, and it doesn't change. So this Bahamas event, you'd think that more center consoles would be attending and a lot of performance boats would be staying back. Well, that just isn't the case, especially here on this event today. In fact, we've got a 50-foot Outer Limits attending with uh, Mercury Racing 1100s. We've got a couple of cats. We've got a handful of performance V-bottoms. And, of course, the rest of them are center consoles. Clearly, these are the boats that are, I think, best suited for doing these Bahamas runs. A little bit bumpy here at Holliver Inlet uh, and climbing on board with Rob Rill's crew on this uh, 37 Axopar. And you can see they're getting wet and they haven't even gotten out of the inlet yet. And I hope that doesn't illustrate what we're going to expect to see for this trip. But, you know, you can always expect it to be a little bumpy here in the inlet, especially on an outgoing tide. And I think with the east winds, that's exactly what's happening. Uh, we thought that with the earlier departure, we might skip some of these uh, windy and rougher conditions. But clearly, once we got out here, as we now catch up with John Kosker, you can see, you know, this is a big 42-foot Mystic, a big, heavy offshore V-bottom uh, center console. And he's bouncing a little bit. You know, he's got the boat under control. But you can see a lot of the boats are going to be bouncing along and kind of porpoising along. And that is because we've got some swell today. So let's say hi now officially to John and Robin Kosker and their family on this uh, Mystic 42. Of course, they are the owners of the company. And uh, this, of course, being their flagship model, the M4200, this one with Quad Mercury Racing 450s. We saw a lot of this boat on the previous episodes up in Orange Beach. So remember now, that was only about three weeks earlier. Uh, Orange Beach was mid-May, uh, where John put on a good show with this boat. And here we are now in early June and uh, bringing the family along for this Bahamas adventure. And here's Anthony Bertozzi. He's from Virginia, but he's got a home in Fort Lauderdale. Smoking Hot is his 38-foot cigarette Top Gun uh, Twin Step, Mercury Racing 525s. He said in his video bio that what does he love about power boating? The people and the love of being on the water. Well, you're going to be on the water now, Anthony, for at least a few days. So uh, let's hope you all enjoy it. And one thing I would like to mention, even though Anthony and his crew are, I consider to be seasoned poker runners, they've done so many events with us over the years, they are newbies when it comes to heading to the Bahamas. This is their very first Bahamas poker run. So cross our fingers, guys. Let's have a great ride and uh, hope everything goes well. And now moving across the pack, as you can see, we are heading southbound now, and that's because we need to get more helicopter time. Don't want to head offshore too soon because then we'll lose time with the chopper and then we won't have a chance to cover most of the boats as we head out here towards the Gulf Stream. Looking to the left now, that is uh, Stephen Sweet and very appropriately named uh, Team Sweet Spot, a 42-foot scout with quad Mercury 350s. I love the black hull and the uh, white deck. Great looking boat, a big wave crushing machine, extremely heavy. I don't know the exact weight, but I'm guessing it's probably at least uh, 18 to 20,000 pounds, as you can see how it's just crushing through these waters. And as I read uh, Steve's video bio, in fact, he said that what made him attend this event was he wanted to test out the scout's rough water capabilities by running it over the Gulf Stream to the Bahamas. So Steven, you picked a perfect event uh, to test out your boat, and I'm sure that you're very happy with the outcome. And going to cross over the pack now. Uh, some cool shots from the 360 camera again. And uh, as you can see, we're continuing south. We're really only going to do this for about maybe 15 miles so we'll past government cut before we turn and head offshore. Good chance to get some wide shots. There's Project 1080 with uh, myself and uh, Jackie and the two boys, uh, Tyler and Maxwell, on board. A nice family getaway on the 38-foot cigarette, which seems to be running pretty good. It's uh, been a while since we've used the boat. And, of course, uh, big thanks to our sponsors, Mercury Racing, who got us into this boat back oh, three years ago. Uh, the Project 1080 is the name that I thought was appropriate because it is the sum of the two Mercury Racing 540 stern drives that are in the boat. And uh, at this point in time, they're at about 280 hours of runtime uh, over the last three years. And I said earlier there was some big performance cats joining us. Well, it doesn't get much bigger and faster than that. Right in the foreground, Michael and Sarah Howe in their 39-foot MTI Team Lightspeed 2.0. Of course, many of us watched them uh, on their 
YouTube channel called How to Live, where they have done many adventures, not just power boating adventures, but a lot of other cool power sports uh, like off-roading and snowmobiling. So this is a couple that love to travel and they love to live on the edge. And if you haven't watched them on How to Live, uh, you need to get on that channel and enjoy it because there's millions of others Americans and people from around the globe that are enjoying the content that they produce and doing it in style in this brand new 39 foot MTI pair of Mercury Racing 450s. They've got a great lifestyle because they live in the Florida Keys and they don't sit around, they don't let the grass grow under their feet. When they're not doing a poker run, they're out and about and they're finding new adventures to create more content for their channel. So what a great couple to have in the Florida Powerboat Club. And uh, I might make a note, I think this is the very first time that we've had an MTI 39 cat uh, joining us for the Bahamas Poker Run. Of course, this is a model that is taking the performance boating world by storm. A very popular model, more and more of them showing up on poker runs. But again, the very first time that we've seen uh, this particular model joining us for the Bahamas Poker Run. And still maintaining that southbound heading towards Miami. Uh, getting some good chopper time here on this early Friday morning. And you can see we're getting a bit of a beam C already. Uh, a good indicator that it's probably going to be a bumpy ride heading across the Gulf Stream because what we see here just along the coastal route can be easily increased by another two or three feet uh, chop as we get out into the Gulf Stream. Uh, so we can expect probably three to four footers once we get out into the uh, 10, 15 mile range heading offshore. Going to be a 50 mile run exactly from the government cut uh, turning point and straight across to the entrance of Bimini Harbor. I know you guys love the roar of that horsepower. Let's listen in to those Mercury Racing 540s. Now catching up with Robert and Chrissy Lockyer and uh, getting a chance to really see two sides of the Mystic lineup. This is the C4400, uh, a Mystic Cat. So we've now seen the 42 off in the distance. Now this is the 44 Cat powered by Mercury Racing 1100s, a nice power package for this boat. Uh, and it's a very stylish cat, one that I think has been very popular on poker runs. They haven't built a lot of these, but most of the ones that John has built had at some point made their way into the Florida Powerboat Club. And interesting geography point, Rob and Chrissy came all the way from Wales in the UK to join us for this event. And it looks like we are kind of creating a little mystic segment here, the factory tour. <laughs> Mike Pizzolante in his M4200, a boat we've seen a lot on the club events, uh, but not necessarily with Mike at the helm. He's done a couple of runs with the club. He purchased this boat recently. And if you'll notice the ride attitude of this boat today is just kind of cruising along uh, nice and slowly. He's just trying to keep his crew comfortable for the ride. And in this uh, Donzi 35ZR, Ryan Harris from Canada. Well, he's got a home in Florida, but he's also from Canada. His first event with the club. We've been talking to Ryan for some time now. Finally, uh, nice to see him join us. Originally from Toronto, he moved to Florida last year and uh, trailered the boat down to join us from West Palm Beach. This is a 2007 uh, Donzi 35ZR powered by Mercury Racing 600s. And reading from Ryan's uh, video bio, he said, uh, why did he attend this event or why did you come back? He said, did it for the experience and the ability to run with other similar boats. Well, you picked the right place. There are a few other similar boats to your 35 Donzi. Let's listen in and see how she runs. Well, imagine that, another Mystic, uh, of course. So our fourth Mystic now, this time it's a 3800. Bruce Prescott uh, doing his first event with the club in this 38, powered by Quad Mercury 300 outboards. And from his video bio, uh, Bruce tells us that 
He loves uh, power boating because of the feeling of the open seas and, of course, meeting new friends. Interesting note that Bruce actually brought the boat all the way from his home in Jupiter uh, the day earlier, came all the way down the coastal waters to Miami to join us. Then after doing the Bahamas poker run, he ran all the way back to Jupiter again. So he probably got in more boating than a lot of us uh, over the next few days. And another thing that Bruce mentioned in his video bio is that he was introduced to the Florida Powerboat Club by his friend Doug Falcone in New Jersey. So I guess we got to thank Doug for that one. In fact, the majority of new blood in our club is from referrals alone. So we appreciate when you guys tell all your friends how much fun you're having with the Florida Powerboat Club. And here we are. We have arrived here at Resorts World Bimini. It's a Hilton. And it is the resort that has really changed the whole atmosphere on the islands of Bimini. And it's been a great destination for us uh, since it opened about 10 years ago. You can see there the Project 1080. And there is the Nortec of John Mahalik. And it looks like Delaney's uh, outer limits there. So the boats have got great docking. It wasn't a very busy weekend. So we got great docking facilities, uh, especially this concept which is uh, docked right here at a house that they rented. Not a bad situation, but we are now moving into our fun run agenda, which uh, begins on Saturday morning. Hey, you're going the wrong way, guys. We're going out to the concrete ship. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be there shortly. Uh, Max got a chance behind the helm here on the Project 1080. Got Max and Tyler with me. Jackie decided to stay back at the hotel room and relax. And you can see off there in the distance, that is the concrete ship. It's called the Sapona, and it is a landmark here uh, in South Bimini. It's been here since about the 1930s when it ran aground during a big storm. And uh, rumor is that it was a prohibition vessel for many, many years. But the big holes uh, in the side of the boat are from uh, target practice, really. I have been told uh, and through various accounts that this was uh, a target for the Homestead Air Force Base when they sent out uh, various missions to test the guns during World War II and since then of course becoming a very popular tourist attraction for divers and snorkelers. It's a good time to have your camera in hand. Uh, an underwater GoPro would be a good thing to have right about now and what would happen to that one? That one was a toss that didn't get caught and there's a GoPro boom on the floor of the ocean. <laughs> that was Team Dark Side uh, preparing for their snorkeling mission and uh, yes let's take the GoPro with us but you're gonna to have to actually hang on to the camera to get some great shots. So uh, they've got the right idea. You can see a lot of boats have joined us here, not just with the poker run, but a lot of other uh, local boats that are here having a good time. Dark Side are doing this for their very first time. So indeed, they are very excited uh, getting a lot of use out of this 37 foot axle par. And here's a nice shot that shows the wide variety of boats that are here at the concrete ship today. And you notice how calm it is certainly a very attractive day now we're getting into the uh, ship jumping routine <laughs> for those of us who are a little more adventurous and agile yes indeed you can climb up the ship on a very sketchy rope ladder uh, so if you're willing to take the plunge well if you can climb up there without killing yourself and get up on the top of the ship there goes tyler and max uh, doing their tandem jump not their first rodeo they've been here before they love jumping off the bow of the ship and I think this is where they're going to do their more gymnastic routine. There goes Max, and he does a garden variety jump. Good job, Max. That's about a 6.5. And let's see what his brother does, uh, Tyler. And this is going to be, oh, he does a backflip. Not bad. Okay, we'll give Tyler about a 9.1 on that one. And uh, good to have the boys along. And here they are doing their stunts off the front of, yes, Project 1080. Oh, dual nines on that one. And the show continued above the Sapona. And I was quite shocked to see these young ladies in their bikinis all barefoot climbing up there. Usually it tends to be a guy thing. But uh, go girls. I got to say, these ladies uh, got out here and did it. And I've got to say, I was very impressed because, you know, you really can get banged up climbing up this uh, concrete rebar ship. It's nasty. It's rusty. And if you uh, slip, you can mess yourself up real bad. So uh, a very adventurous crew here today at the Sapona. And it looks like it's a wrap here for our little segment from the Sapona, but we're not going to call it a day yet. We still have uh, North Bimini to visit. And one of the destinations that we like to frequent is the Honeymoon Harbor, which is a great place to feed the stingrays. Uh, we're going to miss that on this particular event. We didn't get any video footage of that, uh, but we did have a nice time over there. And it's a great location to just uh, walk around in the shallow water and have some chopped up squid in a solo cup. And you can feed the stingrays by hand. It's a lot of fun. It appears that Max is uh, hogging the helm today. Tyler seems to be okay with it because he's the one who always wants to drive. But Max got some good seat time today. And here we are pulling up at the north side of Bimini. Now, 
uh, imagine this big, beautiful beach. Years ago, there were no houses and no buildings whatsoever on this beach. And back in the day, that would have been the early 90s, we used to come up here and it was just total wilderness and uh, really a very private experience. But now it's all these beautiful luxury homes. And of course, it was only a matter of time before they really developed Bimini. And that's what we've been seeing over the last decade. Wynn Farnsworth and Sarah in the 007 Sunseeker there off to our port bow and they have been on the run. We haven't seen this boat yet, but they ran over a day earlier, but at their own pace and from the Hillsborough Inlet, where we left from the Hallover Inlet, this 80 foot Sunseeker is triple engine, big power. It does cruise at 40 knots. So it's really only about a 90 minute ride to come over from Pompano Beach to Bimini. And that is their airship uh, tender uh, with the T-top uh, tied up alongside. It's about a 28 footer. Uh, with twin Mercury outboards, and that is Rob Lockyer's Mystic 44. Uh, Rob and Chrissy joined us uh, for the weekend. Uh, one of the biggest cats we've seen do this event in a very long time. We've seen at least three other Mystics on the run. Of course, they're all center consoles. All right, well, Bahamas Poker Run, 30th anniversary with the Jones boys. Woohoo! We have two swimmers that are on shore right now that we've got to look out for them to make sure they make it back. Yeah. Do you think they know how to get back? I mean, do they? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then we've got First Officer Wild Bill over there in the, the hydrofoil. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, so he's, he's doing good as well. So. Adrian, what are you doing? I'm waiting for my turn on the e-foil. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't look like he wants to give it to I you, know. does he? <laughs> Come on, Wild Bill. Come save us, And I'm truly amazed that this team even made it to haul over and made it on the run because just a few days before the poker run, Rob admitted that he could not get his Mercury Racing 450s that he ordered for the boat, and he went out and bought a separate set of twin 400s and got them rigged just three days before the run, and somehow they managed to make this event. And that just blew me away. I love telling the story. And I shared that story with all of them poolside after we played out their hands. Because no, we're gonna get them on Monday and we're gonna put them on the boat on Tuesday. We're gonna test run it on Wednesday and do the poker run on Thursday. I said, you are fucking kidding me. In my mind, I didn't say that to him, but in my mind I was saying, he's fucking high. He's high, right? He's high, he's high. He's high. Or he knows nothing about the marine industry, which would be true. <laughs> and here, here you guys are, all 10 of you. Right? So most spirited team. That's yeah, team And fast forward to now Sunday as we cross over the Bahama Bank. It's about an 85-mile ride from Bimini to Chub Key. And here we are arriving at Chub Key. It's a beautiful place. They have built some wonderful villas along the waterfront here. And, of course, it has a giant floating dock marina. Very popular with boaters who like to transit through the central Bahamas. In fact, the Berry Islands are considered to be the most central or the hub of the Bahamas. And uh, since they have done these renovations, including this Chub Key a clubhouse and restaurant it is just amazing we don't really have a lot of coverage of that lunch stop guys but uh 
You can look it up online, see it's a beautiful place, or you can look back in some of our videos from previous years. Now we're out into the bumpy waters of this northwest channel. We're crossing this 30-mile trek from Chub Key across to Nassau. It's going to be our final destination now for the rest of the event. And, you know, just a real bumpy start. I failed to mention that earlier. Nice crossing over the Bahama Bank, but once we get into what we call the tongue of the ocean and these deeper waters, you know, it's probably six or seven thousand feet deep here you really are truly in the ocean and uh, it can be a very very rough ride so uh, a lot of us made it though this is uh, looks like dark side arriving right here yes indeed at the margaritaville resort where most of us docked we had uh, 23 boats registered on the run completely and i think about maybe 12 to 15 of them made it over to this segment of the run and of those 12 to 15 we split it up between margaritaville and of course Atlantis Resort which is across the uh, Nassau Harbor and from the Project 1080 there's a better shot now you can see Margaritaville it is on the left and then on the right uh, that's another big resort that's all part of the same development uh, it is a Chinese development company who own the Hilton Nassau which is that yellow building off to the left uh, in addition to building the Margaritaville they also built a nice marina up front it's a little bit uh, overexposed to the turbulent waters or, you know, I'd say like the wakes, but not a bad deal if you tie the boat up properly. Here's a nice shot of the property itself, uh, and it really has been done very, very nicely. Understand it is all brand new. Um, they tried to open this property amidst COVID, so naturally they didn't get a very good start. But uh, so we're some of the first groups that have actually visited this property. Here now, a closer look at this beautiful pool area. And a lot of us spent time in that pool, and it really was a nice vibe and a nice setting. Of course, it all overlooks Nassau Harbor, and off in the distance, you can see Atlantis. Well, guys, I hope that we gave you a good idea of how fast and furious we were in these last few days leaving from Miami, making our way over to First Bimini, then Chub Key, and now here in Nassau, where we're going to spend the next three days with the Florida Powerboat Club. You can see we got some beautiful weather, but we just hit that 30-minute mark, guys. It's time to sign off, and we are going to return with our second episode with feature coverage of the 30th annual Bahamas Poker Run. So we are going to sign off, but just for a little while, guys, because we have plenty more content coming to you here on Florida Powerboard Club's YouTube channel. Remember, the only way you're going to find out when the next show is is to subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll get an update every time a new episode is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events in 2021, as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club, and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page, and you guys know who you are, and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We have got a fantastic year planned for 2021 with members of the Florida Powerboat Club, so stay with us. Meanwhile, we're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.